Hey Ellis County, Kevin Crouch here, and um, I was on the fence on whether I was going to uh, bring a video briefing on this severe weather event. It really doesn't look like it's going to be a major event that we're going to have overnight tonight, but since it is an overnight event, I wanted to make sure that you at least kind of knew what to expect in case you wanted to put a plan in place on... Um, you know, how to get uh, information, how to get warnings. And um, I know a lot of the time in a lot of households, uh, you know, your plan usually includes having a designated person to wake up or stay up or whatever to kind of watch that. Usually that was my dad uh, growing up. Um, and usually I'd be watching with him, but uh, he kind of took on the responsibility of being the one individual. And if things got crazy, you know, he would wake everybody else up and everybody else could sleep. So um, I just kind of wanted to make sure that you were ready uh, since this is uh, a early morning, late night, early morning event when most people are sleeping. As you can see on radar right now, nothing going on. Uh, a little bit of just stuff here and there, and uh, some of this is ground clutter. Some of this may be very light drizzle. Um, if we zoom out here, you can see off to our east, there's a little bit of stuff. Down to our south, there's a little bit of stuff, but really not much uh, because there is a lot of moisture in the air, but there's not not a lot of rain out there right so uh if we take a look at the uh region or really the country um you're going to see most of that's not reaching the ground uh but if we if we do zoom out you can see off to our west um there's some activity there this is going to eventually be where we'll see storms develop later on this evening uh so uh there the activity is out there and that will be pushing off to the east over time, and uh, that is going to be where we'll start to see uh, more activity tonight and to go into the uh, overnight hours. It is pretty cloudy. If we take a look at the uh, satellite, you can see plenty of clouds over our area, plenty of uh, moisture keeping cloudiness over us. We may see a few breaks in the clouds today. I don't think we're going to see much, though. Uh, not expecting really much sun, if any at all, uh, during the day today. Let's get into the, uh, let's look ahead. Let's take a look at the, uh, I'm sorry, let me see here. Go ahead and look at the, let's see, do we have a full run here? Let's go back to 17Z. So, uh, so this is the high resolution rapid refresh, and this is probably the best look we're going to have at what's going to happen. Again, clouds over the area right now. Uh, very light preset, possibly here and there. Uh, here we go to 6 p.m. You can see a few little dots of, of possible rain there. So a little bit of rain going on off to the west. If you'll notice, things start kind of bubbling up tonight off to our west, south of Sweetwater, and then up towards Wichita Falls. Um, and, and, and again, this isn't saying this is exactly where this stuff's going to happen. This is an approximation, right? Expecting development from Wichita Falls down towards Sweetwater and on south uh, west of San Angelo. So um, just kind of the general area area and as we go ahead we have midnight here basically a broken line of, of thunderstorms uh, many of which could very well be severe it does look like this activity will weaken as it moves off to the east so uh, this may be right around midnight this may be kind of the the height of the storm strength um, and the, you know this may be in, in fact what I'll show you is that if we overlay this with the severe weather threat area uh, as you can see we're in the yellow that's a slight risk and so yeah you can see that this is kind of um, right in the middle of that area so this is probably where the storms are going to be at their height um, overnight tonight and then as they go on forward um, oh we don't have an image on that yet so um, looks like the 17z didn't complete its run or something let's go back to the other ones will be pretty similar. And then what, what happens, if you notice this, uh, there is this line out ahead of it. The, the model is thinking that we're going to get an outflow boundary that's probably going to move out ahead. And one of the things you notice is that those storms start to kind of fall apart a little bit. Let's go back to 13. You can see kind of this broken line of storms. It's, it's thinking there might be, this looks like it's estimating possibly a more isolated storm or two. Those may need to be watched further out to our northwest for uh, supercell activity, large hail, possibly some tornadoes. By the time it gets into our area, though, uh, it's a 
pretty, it's it's a thin line, kind of a broken line, followed by some showers and thunderstorms in the back, but really not much. And then as we go to right around 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., uh, let's go to, this is the 3 a.m. image. And as you can see, just a kind of a broken line, a much less intense line uh, of showers and thunderstorms moving through our area. And then that's 3 a.m. And then as we get to uh, the 4 a.m. image, pushing off to the east, possibly regaining some strength there. And as we go off to 18, uh, this has it kind of hanging around our area right around 5 a.m. So it does look like we could have some rain that kind of lingers around our area after the initial line of storms comes through. I think once we get through that first line, I don't really think you can see some of these oranges and reds here. I don't think it's going to be really that intense after we get to that point. So um, I think that really 3 or 4 a.m. is going to be kind of the height of what we can expect. Um, so like I said, f uh, this is kind of that first, that initial line. I'm pretty sure this is estimating a bit of an outflow boundary pushing ahead of it, uh, right around 2 AM. So, uh, we may see an increase in winds from the West around 2 AM, maybe a little bit of rain, and then we'll see that line off to our West at that point. And then again, uh, you know, you know, go through, uh, image 16, right around 3 AM entering from the West. Now for good measure, let's go see what the NAM model, this is another one of the models models that we follow uh, is, is, let's see what that one's saying. Let's see if we have a full run on that. Okay, now let's go back to the 12Z, uh, which I think is going to be pretty decent. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty much saying the same thing. A few scattered showers here and there. And uh, so you see the development again off to our west. And then, uh, so tonight it's saying that there could be a few more showers in our area right around 5 p.m. Uh, and then, of course, off to the west here from Big Spring up to Sweetwater on up to Vernon. Uh, the NAM is a little bit more dramatic. Uh, more showers in our area, kind of more development off to the west. And then, yeah, you can see here, uh, again, kind of agreeing here. This is 11 o'clock, so from around Wichita Falls and then over to St. Angelo. So, uh, again, it's kind of pointing to these two areas of development, right? Just like the um, HR was saying. And then let's see, 2 a.m. here, again, kind of a broken line moving into western parts of North Texas with a few showers ahead of it. And then moving into our area again around 4 a.m. Now the, the NAM is a little bit less dramatic now than uh, it was looking earlier. And uh, so again, a broken line. Let's go back to an earlier image here. So yeah, just a, a broken line of showers and thunderstorms right around 3 a.m. Looks like the most intense activity further up to our north at that point. And uh, we got a, a image number, let's go to frame 21, right around 4 a.m. moving in and then moving out of our area, really falling apart. Uh, in, at least in our part of the storm by 5 a.m. So looks like the, the NAM has a little bit of a later time period and uh, eight, the 18Z run. All these are different runs of that model. So we got a new run coming in soon. We'll see what that says and how well maybe it lines up with the HR model, uh, which is run hourly. Uh, this is every six hours. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of see what that says and see if there's any kind of uh, further agreement between those. But really, the, the consensus is that we'll have a line of showers and thunderstorms move in tonight. Uh, there's a chance that there could be a few strong to severe storms involved in all of that. Uh, and, you know, it does look like we could... Um, be looking at a solid line of storms most likely for our area. Uh, so let's just cruise right on over to uh, really what we're expecting as far as the, the threats for our area. So uh, let's go ahead and go over to that. So uh, this is what we're looking at. So overall, a slight risk of severe weather. I think that the slight risk is, is largely cautionary. I think that we could probably get away with a marginal risk for our area at this point, but we'll wait and see what more models say. We still have, you know, about right around 12 hours. So it's just almost three o'clock now as, 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 you know, I'm filming this. Um, so about 12 more hours of, of model data and, and things of different factors to check out. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, it, it could change tonight, but I think right now slight is probably fitting. We could probably get away with a marginal risk for our area, but, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But overall, right now, a slight risk. Um, as you can see, this is kind of a usual deal. Damaging wind and hail 
kind of being our primary threats. There is a low end tornado threat, and if we do get any tornadoes, there'll be those those kind of brief spin up QLCS tornadoes. We talked about this before. Those quasi linear convective system tornadoes. A quasi linear convective system is uh, like the solid line of storms that comes through, as opposed to like the individual storms, right? And um, as we saw. What last Monday recently, uh, sometime recently, uh, we saw where we were having those little spin-ups, right? Those little areas of rotation on the leading edge of the the storm. That's essentially what I'm going to be watching for overnight tonight. Um, this really doesn't look that intimidating to me, but there is enough shear out there to where it could cause a few little spin-ups, and and any of that, any of those spin-up tornadoes are going to be weak, they're going to be brief, There's this is not uh, any kind of a major situation, not anything like what we're looking at uh, in the Mid-South. Tomorrow, that could be a, a whole different animal, and the storm chasers are hyping that thing like crazy, uh, but it does look like it could be a pretty intimidating event in that area. Um, the good news, if there is any, is that there is a research uh, project going on in that part of the country that uh, deals with learning more about those QLCS tornadoes. And it looks like, if nothing else, this could be a really good opportunity to get some data out there. So, you know, fingers crossed that we get some uh, really good data out of it and maybe not so much destruction. Um, but out for this area, we're primary, primarily looking at those strong winds on the leading edge of the storm, possibly some hail as it comes through, too. It looks like it's going to be, at least as far as the stronger storms, a pretty thin line. So I don't think that, that anything's going to really happen. But yeah, we're looking at right around 3 or 4 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, strong winds and heavy rain. The strongest storms could contain damaging winds, hail, and perhaps a brief tornado or two. Tornado threat is low. Uh, and of course, I'll have more updates. And this was updated 8.15. There really hasn't been any change since then, so I haven't really needed to updated at that point uh, i could lie to you and say you know i updated this five minutes ago but i didn't actually make any changes because they weren't really necessary so let's talk a little bit about ways to receive warnings now overnight storms are the ones that really concern me the most not really tonight but especially when there's a higher tornado threat overnight because it's harder sometimes for people to get warnings or to pay attention because everybody wants to sleep right so here's the different ways you can get warnings. You can use the NOAA weather radio, which I've talked about on this channel several times. Local TV and radio, of course, you know you can watch your, your TV stations. Um, you know, radio, uh, KRLD, uh, Dan Brunoff is really great over at KRLD. Uh, wireless emergency alerts and weather apps. So, you know, the, the alerts you get on your phone where you can go into the settings. Seems like it's buried in there, but if you just go to your uh, your settings and search for emergency alerts, uh, it'll pull that up to so make sure all of those are turned on. And then uh, they're pretty much similar, as, the same thing as the uh, Amber Alerts. They, they work the same way. Uh, you know, there's weather apps. Too different weather. I, I don't have one or the other to recommend specifically to you, but there are weather apps out there that will give you personalized, uh, you know, uh, alerts for your area. I'll also put in the the, the uh, kind of the comments in the description here where you can get uh, text messages from the. Uh, the county they will actually send you an alert for ellis county specifically outdoor sirens now it lists these however at that hour you're probably not gonna be um let me let me just move the the logo and everything here um so that you can move uh, Jimmy's logo there. Uh, so you can actually see this. And, and it does list the outdoor sirens. Now, most people at 3 a.m. are not outside. So their outdoor sirens really are not relevant at this point in this storm because we're not going to be looking at uh, a lot of people being outside. And that's the only time you need to be paying attention to the outdoor sirens. They're not for you if you're inside, okay? Not relevant. Uh, now, if, if we're having a big event like the Texas Country Reporter Festival or a Polka Fest or one of those things, then outdoor sirens are absolutely necessary, uh, but not in this situation. Internet sites, mobile.weather.gov to get information on your phone or just weather.gov or, hey, Ellis County Weather, right? Uh, that's, you know, that's one way, of course, I'll be streaming and bringing any kind of warnings to you. 
then friends, family, coworkers. That's what I was talking about, where sometimes people will say, hey, I know you're going to be up. Will you text me or call me? Uh, or, you know, if it's a family, sometimes they'll say, hey, you know, uh, dad's going to stay up and watch and everybody will sleep and dad will wake us up if, if you know, or mom or whoever, uh, you know, will wake us up in case something happens. So those are the ways you want to make sure you have multiple ways. I would say um, a, a minimum of three different ways to get warnings, especially overnight. The thing about the weather radio is that thing has an alarm on it that will actually sound quite loudly uh, to wake you up. So worst case scenario, that is an option. And then, uh, you know, between all of those, just make sure that you have an option to get warnings that will wake you up if the worst happens. We're not expecting a huge event tonight. I, I think that most of us are probably just going to sleep through it and not a lot is going to happen, but I will be monitoring all of this overnight. Uh, so stay tuned for more updates. You know, Before you go to bed tonight, um, check in with the page, and, and if there are any major differences and major changes in this forecast, I'll let you know. Otherwise, I think it's pretty much going to stay the same. Uh, so with that, I will let you guys get back to the rest of your day and just watch elliscountyweather.com as well as uh, Facebook and YouTube for all all of the latest updates.